Hey guys, Mark here with another edition of Weaponized Truth. I know I open up my videos this way sometimes, and I apologize, but I just want y'all to know, um, even though these aren't like super flashy videos like you see on some of these other channels, I have to tell you that making these things sometimes, it's really, really frustrating. Uh, I can spend up to 15, 20 minutes sometimes recording a video for you guys. Um, quite, it happens quite a bit, and by the time I get to the end, my... Um, my video recorder will crash and freeze up and I'll have to do the whole thing over again. That's what just happened to me. I'm a little frustrated. Uh, so, uh, so I hope y'all appreciate the time that I've taken out to make these videos because I just want to share um, interesting stories with y'all. Uh, with that said, uh, I want to tell you first and foremost, this video that I ran about, uh, this that I, that I ran into is about the Mandela Effect. I don't subscribe to the theory and I don't want you guys to run off as soon as I mention it. Uh, I just want you to hear me out. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to the video so you can go watch this. Um, but what we have here is a 13 year old, uh, some kind of child prodigy genius, who is a 13 year old self proclaimed theoretical, theoretical physicist. This kid is really, really intelligent. Some people think he could very well be the next Einstein, Stephen Hawking of the next generation. He's, he's really that smart and he's only 13 years old. Uh, he believes in the Mandela Effect. And uh, why he believes in the Mandela Effect and some of the stuff that he talks about relating to it um, are pretty interesting. Now, while I don't subscribe to the Mandela Effect theory myself, uh, I do think with all the incredible things... Uh, that we're seeing uh, more and more that are possible uh, to completely um, discard um, something just because you don't agree with it uh, is, is, is not an intelligent way to live. You should leave yourself open up to, uh, to uh, uh, new thoughts and ideas uh, because as we know, uh, these scientific uh, principles and stuff like that um, seem to be getting changed and disproved um, and just all mixed up all the time. Uh, so you never know what's really possible. Uh, one thing that we do know, at least uh, for, if you follow Anthony Patch and his uh, stuff over at CERN, which is what this uh, kid here is talking about, is that um, <clears throat> they've been talking about all over the, you know, the news that CERN has been looking for what they call the, the God particle over there when they're using this Large Hadron Collider to crash these uh, atoms into each other at the speed of light or whatever it is. Uh, but what the, really the fact of the matter is, if you really research it, is what they've actually been looking for for 50 years. Uh, these scientists have been looking for something they call the Satan particle and apparently they found it um, over um, at CERN. It's called the Pentaquark. Right, and the uh, pentaquark sounds a lot like what? Pentagram, hence the Satan particle. Uh, and they've made it <clears throat> very clear that one of the, some of the things they want to do over at CERN is they want to open up the space-time continuum, and they want to open up the doorway to parallel universes. And what this 13-year-old theoretical physicist here has posited is he believes in the Mandela effect. Um, <clears throat> but what he believes has happened is that these guys over at CERN have already inadvertently um, launched us into um, an alternate dimension and completely changed our reality. Uh, and he says he thinks what they did is uh, if you change the weight of one of these nuclei particles by even the teeniest, tiniest amount, which he believes that they have done, um, it completely changed our reality from one point to another point. And uh, now, there's a couple of things that could be going on here if this, this is in fact true. And I don't know if it is, and I'm not saying it is, but the fact that they're actually trying to do it makes you wonder about the possibility if it could actually happen. I mean, everybody from Neil deGrasse Tyson to Elon Musk to uh, Stephen Hawking They've all said that what they're doing over at CERN could very well destroy the planet and the entire universe. Okay, so they're doing some pretty serious stuff over there. And what he posits when they did when they changed the weight 
of one of the little nuclei particles, it changed our reality and bent it to where we ended up merging into another reality uh, that was pretty much exactly, that was pretty similar. Uh, now he doesn't know how similar or dissimilar it is because basically if you're going to believe there's a parallel uh, universe out there, then there's going to be basically infinite exponential amount of uh, parallel universes out there. Uh, one that could change with every single uh, action that's taken and, uh, and, and, and it splits off from every single decision, uh, every single action, every single invention. All these little things that happen, whether you go left or go right, can create a whole you know, different parallel universe. I mean, this is some mind-blowing stuff if it is, in fact, true. <clears throat> and he believes um, that these uh, changes have uh, curved our reality and are meshing it um, or have meshed it already uh, into a parallel universe, a parallel alternate reality. And um, he said this is why uh, a lot of people are, you know, basically saying this is why people believe the Mandela effect has changed things because when you go to an alternate universe, it may look, it can be almost, well, let's say you're at the, your, our universe is at the bottom of a page, and then you've got seven lines above it that are all different universes. There are different alternate realities. And the one closest to us is going to be different, but it's going to be the one the most similar. And as you branch off further and further away um, into other alternate realities, um, you're going to see more and more differences to eventually you're going to get to an alternate reali uh, reality that's going to be completely unrecognizable. Like I said, this kid's into some mind-blowing stuff. So, just bear with me. <clears throat> now, one of the things that he talked about is what really grabbed my attention uh, even more so than that. Uh, especially since I've heard about the, uh, the, uh, the, the search and the finding of this Satan particle at CERN, one of the things that he touched upon was, was pretty profound. And basically he was talking about uh, if God did in fact make uh, everything in our universe and our reality, uh, he said, he said uh, just based on uh, you know, scientific laws or whatever, or the laws of probability, the chances are eventually, uh, if you keep going from uh, alternate reality, alternate reality, alternate reality, and you keep going further and further away, eventually you're going to get two different realities that have either less powerful gods or more powerful gods, or you get to realities that don't have God at all. And he said, and that's kind of where we get into a conundrum here, and we get into a paradox where he goes, can God make an unmovable stone? Right? Can you eventually get to a reality to where there is no God, and God can't do anything about it because he's just not there? Right, it's pretty crazy. But if the stuff in the Bible is true and uh, they are firing up CERN and they are looking for the Satan particle and they are trying to find uh, alternate dimensions uh, and alternate realities, which they've already said they're trying to do. This is all public information. Now, this isn't a conspiracy theory. Now, whether they've actually done it or not is something else. But nonetheless, uh, if Satan is the ruler of this planet and there is this bad between uh, good and evil that's supposed to happen. Uh, maybe, uh, it, you know, after I heard this, I okay, well, maybe Satan's ultimate plan isn't to beat God, but it's to move him, to slowly move everybody into reality where there is no God, and then he'll just rule because God's not there to do anything about it. Pretty crazy, incredible paradox, I know. But this is the kind of stuff this kid was talking about. I was like, wow. And I, I really think to understand... Um, a lot of the stuff they talk about in the Bible, some of it, which is actually pretty incredible. Um, you really have to step out of the box and really expand your way of thinking and looking at things to fully uh, understand the scope of what is within there. That's just me. But anyways, that's what I took from it. That's the little crazy thing that I, that I got out of it. And I thought it was pretty darn interesting theory. And uh, I'll leave a link to the video so you guys can go check this kid out. But wow. This kid sure is smart. You guys take care.